<laughs> All right. So this is Bruno Souza on the Java tour around the U.S. And we have one more tip here. Oh, man, I'm supposed to introduce you. <laughs> right. So, okay. So here I have the guy, you know, the guy that's like the, the champion of community in the world. Right. You know, his book about community, it's an amazing book. If you're doing a Java easy group or if you want to create a community for you or anything, you got to read this, his book. So, and so the career tip for today is from him. So I have here Sorry. Jono. I shouldn't no, be screwing with you're, you you're, while no, you're being so, so nice in my intro. Oh, Hi, everyone. This is the so, Radisson at 12.15 in the morning. Right. Yeah. So, Jono, you're, 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 you know, I, I know you want to go to sleep. No. You're right. I know, I know you're tired. Now I've met you, I just... Oh, good. All right. So, to, so we can stay here for I, an I hour just, talking? I just, just want to record videos. Uh, right. How much memory have you got on your phone? That's fine. Right. That's okay. not a problem. I so, so you know, what is the biggest tip you can give to someone? Oh, man. Oh, wow. Look Carl at this. Vogel. So Come look at this. Uh, look at oh, this no, no. Guy. Look at this guy this here. This is an open source reunion. Hey, oh, man. Right? What's happening this is, He's recording. We're recording career career tips. Right? Buy low, sell high. I mean, that's my tip. Is it what? Buy low, sell high. Oh, buy low, sell high. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's not career. It could well, be. <laughs> you, you might not need to have a career. Right. If you do enough of yeah, that. Well, you know, career of two years. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so, uh, so now, now we have Carl from? here that is, you know, one of the biggest open source developers of all time. I think I'm the smallest person here. No, you know, I, I'm, I'm way smaller than you are. No, I think we're, we're about the same. But, right. Okay. It's okay. I'm all more right. than heels. <laughs> hey, hey, you you know, like, oh, oh. Okay. I totally lost that one. Okay. All right. So okay. So, 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 so yeah. Second. So that's that's an amazing reunion. Those those two guys oh, here. Yeah. I mean, those, those are two idols of mine. Though you know, I, I've learned a community. We're red. We're officially turning red. I've learned I've learned a community from them. Right. So you know, you you now you have to to tell us a. One career tip. Okay, so a, 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 more, a more specific question, right? Okay. Did anything happen in your life? You know, you're, you're like a developer and you're doing it nice in your career and everything, and then something happened in your life that completely changed things. Oh. And that, that really turned you into okay. rock star. Right, right, I'm going to take this seriously now. I'm going right, to answer yeah. your question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, by the way, I am not a rock star developer. Right? I don't, I'm, I'm not being falsely modest. I'm an okay programmer, yeah, actually, awesome. even good, but not a rock star developer. I'm okay. good at. Convincing other programmers to work on free software. On, That's you, different. You were you were interviewed for the book Rockstar Developers. So so I was. I think you were. Is there is there such a book? I think that, yes. I, I, I should you should. I didn't know about this. that. I remember, yeah. I remember you being there, <laughs> right? Anyway. Okay. Um, so so here's the thing. Uh, this is this is about the role of luck in in one's career. Mm -hmm. I didn't. The way I learned to program was in an environment where free software was the norm. I did not know there was another way. I got to college. I was not a programmer. I was studying piano, like for, for all of high school, and, and actually entered college as, in a conservatory as a piano maker. I was not a programmer. Oh, cool! And this was a uh, the computer science department at Oberlin College was running on free software. This was in the early '90s, and they basically all the source code was open. Everything like they, we had connections to the Free Software Foundation for various reasons. Jim Blandy, the Emacs maintainer, was there and became a good friend. I just got back from dinner with him just now. And the way that lab ran was like if you saw a bug, you were expected to go fix it. Yeah. And so I learned programming with a cultural norm of the source code is available and if you have a problem, change the provider. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know there was another way. Proprietary software was a surprise to me when I encountered it a couple of years later. And I was like, why would anyone want to do that? That's no fun. Don't right. do that. So my, my career advice is get lucky. Get lucky in your original choice of environment and get, have your brain filled with the stuff that's going to turn out to be good later. Okay. There you go. It's good advice. Right. Yes. Also, you know, like, you know, the typical, like, be good in choosing your parents and stuff like that in your genes, <laughs> yeah. right? Well, yeah. you know, but, but the thing is, um, you, you, you start developing, right? You know, you're, you're doing Lace. pianos and then you start Lace, developing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think because, because we, we, we are lucky, uh, to be in a, in a, in a good environment, but a lot of people Usually. were in that environment and they didn't do what you did. They are unlucky. No, I agree. Well, yes, <laughs> yes, that is what bad luck means. <laughs> right. But, but be, because you did. So, so luck is doing it. Right, you you know the story of the 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 the, the employer who's like getting a, got an open position has a lot of resumes coming in has got a big stack this mm -hmm. this call of resumes right takes the bottom half of the stack throws it away uh -huh. says I don't hire unlucky people 
Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but right. that guy's fun at pie. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying making a serious point. No, no, that, fun, that's ahead. fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just, kind of just trying to understand how, how you think, you know. Because just getting, you know, I, I don't think you only get, got luck because you did the work, right? And so, yeah, so, so I went through a bad breakup. And so I entered programming larval stage as a way of avoiding, you know, a way of recovering from personal mm -hmm. problems. Like okay. I learned to program because I was trying not to think about this bad breakup, basically. Right. Um, that's interesting, that's, you know. So it's probably a more common story than is acknowledged. Right. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Okay. So, 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 so it's, like, it's an interesting thing. So, so a difficult time actually made you a great programmer. <laughs> Maybe a programmer for sure. Yeah, at least. Okay. But you're probably looking for advice that people could actually use. Well, is my guess. Well, that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. all, all, um, of these, all of these important. So, so actually, this okay. So I'm actually giving a talk in Chicago on May 16th about this. And let, let me do a quick. I don't want to monopolize your recording. So no, I'll do that's, a quick that's okay. Of this talk, that's... and I actually, I very much like to know your reaction to it mm -hmm. and see if you agree with the basic thesis, which is essentially open source is a reimagination of the labor capital relationship. If you are doing open source programming, that means among other things that you take your resume with you, mm -hmm. right? And right. all the work you did at a given employer, you take it with you when you go, right. you leave them a copy, uh -huh. right? But all those bits are also available at your new employer. And as we know, there are many programmers who move among different employers the whole time working on the same project. Right. This is very common actually. Yes. Always, so this is common knowledge to us. This is actually a shocking surprise to people who are not in the software world. Mm -hmm. They're like, what? You you move from Facebook to Google, and but you, you kept the same thing, job yeah. and working with the same people on the same code for the same purpose. Or even, That's or, weird, right? Or even worse, right? You know, you, right. Sell, you sell your database company, and then and, you create then another you, one with the same source code. Cough, 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 right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and, and things like this are possible because when you're when you're producing open source software the answer to the question are you labor or are you capital is not clear right and this is a new circumstance mm -hmm. since the industrial revolution I but think, it, it right? isn't, isn't this similar to when when we were doing um you know like manual work before the, the, the revolution like doing mm -hmm. um you know like like when when we were artisans instead like of like how you say we Hmm? <laughs> I wasn't. I don't know. About right, you. right, right. I mean, I know. You, well, saying, you look quite like, young. But... No, I'm, I'm saying like when, when, when you. Yeah. As far when... as I'm concerned, manual labor is a Spanish musician. Nice. <laughs> you like that? Bow. <laughs> Carry on. It's on the internet forever. <laughs> um, so I do, well, that's a that is an interesting, that's a complicated historical argument, but I think ultimately the structure of control and like land ownership and where you were allowed to be mm -hmm. that came over from feudal days was that was available to be reinforced by the industrial revolution. So like the idea that, that a Lord, someone would own the fruits of your labor was very easy for people who had already been having the fruits of the labor owned by someone mm -hmm. up the food chain for centuries. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that there would be these owners and that, and you know, unionization was something that came much later and is still controversial. That was something that people maybe didn't like, but they, it was a frame that they could get their heads around. Mm -hmm. But open source, a lot of people have trouble getting their heads around the people who don't work in the field, because if the fruits of your labor can be replicated at zero marginal cost, then it is not clear what it means to own those fruits. And if it's not clear what it means to own them, it's not clear who owns them. And if it's not clear who owns them, then the only sense of ownership that makes any sense here is having the most expertise in right. managing and building upon those changes, which is in the head of the programmer. Mm -hmm. And so I think, although obviously the entire economy will never work this way because some things actually are not replicable, physical objects mm -hmm. are not. Right. I think a lot of the software industry is moving toward this post-Marxian capitalism in which it is, you do not have to classify everything as labor or capital. Mm -hmm. There is this, not even an in-between stage, it's a new class. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are, we are sort of the, the larval stage of that movement. This is the most yeah. is intense conversation I've ever had. In I, I don't know what lobby. you guys yes. were talking about before right. I showed up in the lobby. <laughs> yes. And I hope I didn't harsh your mouth. No, it's but, cool. You know, no, no, it's that's, cool. That's, there you go. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's, that's, so, that's, that's really profound. I, that's, I that's want what, it to be profound, yes. and it's too early to know for sure. Right. <laughs> right. But, right. But, it, but like my career and the career of many open source programmers that we all know have reflected that reality. Like these people are not suffering from job insecurity, mm -hmm. and they have a different relationship with their managers and they're, they're the companies that employ them 
than programmers who don't work on open source software have. And that's that's a really interesting thing. And programmers should keep that in mind when they're looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What what kind of power relationship do you want to have with your manager? You might like them. You might support the company. Mm -hmm. Think the management is great. Even you might even love the VCs. Mm -hmm. But if they own your if they have a monopoly on your work, you have a different power relationship with them than if you're doing open source. Right. And there's just no escaping from that. Yeah. And that's why I just I just don't write proprietary software. I don't want to be in a relationship where I'm disempowered to that degree. Right. Well, so so that that is one hell of a <laughs> career move, right? Do open source. That's what right? I that's what I'm lecturing to, to yeah. the group yeah. about in Chicago on May 16th. Right. That's that's, that's 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 an excellent yeah. move. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So there's I guess that answers your question. That's, that's my answer for your question yeah. anyway. I yes. I don't know what what merriment you were making before I showed up to like go all Marxian on you. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we just got up and just say we're going to start yeah. recording. And then you showed up. So, Wait, so you guys like, work in the night shift. They see these conversations every night. That's probably oh, they do. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. We are not the first people yes, to, uh, to commit this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm I'm sure there's always there's, no al there's always this open source nerds coming along. Oh, Always. Yeah. Every yeah. time I'm going to bed, I yeah. see. Yeah. This. <laughs> at at past house cons, I've seen this kind of conversation happening in the conference center at 3 a.m. All right, but luckily we didn't have. Smartphones with recording We're technology recording at the time. That one right there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Such so as that one. Hi, smartphone. Yes. So how about R you? Running what, partially free software. You know, what What do you have to add to all of these? My tip? Yeah, your tip. I guess mine will be. He was thinking about the tip before you joined. Oh, so, oh so I, I interrupted. Uh, yeah, he's no. trying to keep it in his mind all the time. Not really. I don't know. My, my tip is not Marxian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I think the thing I would say, honestly, this is a bit... This is not really specific to open source. It's just mm -hmm. something I've learned over the years um, in my career. And actually, my a friend of my wife's that she went to school with, she's a teacher. And she teaches like 13, 14 year old kids. And mm -hmm. she invited my wife, who runs a software company, mm -hmm. to come and do a talk. And I went along and did the talk. And it was really interesting talking to these kids. Because, you know, like my recollection of how, being... How old were these kids? They're like 13, 14 uh -huh, years yeah. old. And my recollection of being 13, 14 years old was like... Very different than what I saw in that room. They were very engaged. They, they were very interested. <laughs> oh, that's shocking. I was, that's I right. Was I would not, never have guessed. <laughs> I was not particularly great at school. Um, but the thing that I think is really important in my mind is is about confidence and dealing with adversity, right? So uh -huh. people deal, deal with adversity in lots of different areas. I mean, mm -hmm. people, some people deal with horrific levels of diverse, mm -hmm. uh, adversity, whether it's poverty, right. whether it's... The, whether it's the, I thought you said people deal with horrific levels of diversity. Diversity. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's that's take. That, is, that is not a comment I want on the internet. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so the, the I think I've become a real fan of this philosophy called Stoicism in recent years, mm -hmm. which is essentially... I was just talking about it with Jim Blandy. Really? Yeah, Epictetus. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, keep I'm, going, sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm a... I'm a huge fan of Stoicism, and the basic the base the basic gist of it is that it's how to deal with difficulty in life, and mm -hmm. it's essentially being able to say when a situation happens, I can look at it almost like from an external perspective, looking in. Mm -hmm. So everybody who's watching this will know this: like you you have a meeting with your boss, and it doesn't go as well, or your your spouse or your other half is frustrated with you in some kind of way, and you get that knot in your stomach, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's essentially a way of dealing with that, with wrestling with that, with looking at your life as an objective set of decisions that you have control over. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I've learned is this is a muscle. This is a thing that you train. It's something that every mm -hmm. day you get wrong, every day you get right. Mm -hmm. But when you feel a sense that you're empowered to deal with this, what happens is everything you come across in your career, you know, if, if you're watching this and you've, you know, you're, you're at college or whatever, you haven't applied for your first job mm -hmm. or you've just made a mistake in some way, and it can feel just galling, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Is that what happens is it gives you a way of, 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 of dealing with that. I'll give you a tiny example. About four or five years ago, I was asked to keynote OSCON, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a big deal in my career. It was terrible. <laughs> right? I was there. It was it, not terrible. Oh, dude, you're being so nice. Uh, it was, it was a 10-minute talk mm -hmm. I had to do, and, and it was terrible. Uh, I, I prepared, but I just wasn't going to do a 10-minute talk. Right. So I got up, I did it. It was 5,000 people. <laughs> And I got off the stage, I knew that that wasn't good. Right. And I talked to a good friend of mine, Steve Wally. You probably know. Yeah. And I said, what do you think? And he said, you know what? Some people are good at writing short stories. Some people are good at writing novels. You're better at novels. <laughs> and what I took... Oh, Stephen. Yeah, and I, what I took for that yeah. hit, and he's one of the reasons why I love him so much, is that he gave me a piece of feedback that I could work with. Mm -hmm. When I walked yeah, up the stage... Right. It was the knot in the stomach. So right. one thing I would say is whatever you're dealing with in your life, whether you're new at your career, whether you're dealing with 
relationship, whatever it might be, think about how you can look from the outside in. How do I want to manage this situation? And that is, in my mind, what helps people succeed. That, yeah, that is, is it, good advice. So yeah, is, is, is it, yeah, yeah. Is, isn't this like like when you take responsibility for the things? Because a lot of a lot of people put the responsibility for anything that happens to them right. on the outside, right? Right. So you know, so you, you know, you're. I don't know. You're you're in traffic, and then you're complaining to everyone that the traffic is low, or you know, or or the, the light that doesn't turn, or you come here in the hotel and you complain that the person over there didn't treat you well. Right. But you know, every, every time everything is other one's other's fault, there's nothing you can do. Right. But if you consider that that's something that you can do, then. Well, and, and that's the thing. One of the things that uh, a guy who I met about six months ago said is that in every situation, there's a transfer of power, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, so if when you're it's in, in thought, but maybe well, true. Yeah, yeah, like when you, but when, well, there's a transfer of power, but there's also a relinquishment of power. So mm -hmm. if you go, mate, hey, we're, how are you doing? We're recording a video yeah, right hey. now. Oh, God, you're I'm famous sorry, now. Sorry, hey, no, you're no. famous. <laughs> you're in the video. You're famous in the Java community. Now, where does that? <laughs> So the thing is, is that uh, the example here was if, if like, if you go into a meeting with someone, right, um, within the first few minutes, there'll be a transfer of power. And it's whether you let that person have your power and whether they take the power, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, this is at the core of stoicism, is that if you retain the power of the situation, even if you're in a room with someone really famous mm -hmm. or someone you don't know or someone you want something from, uh -huh. the thing is, is that you, it's about taking control of the situation inside of your own head. The other thing about stoicism is, this is very deep for Radisson at 12.15. <laughs> is, is, oh, I know. We want to yeah. go over to the Four are, Seasons. We should, let's go to the Hampton. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Are, you, are you guys competing to see who, who goes more, more I know. This is, yeah, I went all the way to the Greeks. Right. Like, yeah. I, can't, yeah. I can't compete with right. that. <laughs> I have to go and have a drink sometime. Um, so the thing is, as well, is um, within the, a core principle of Stoicism is that inside every obstacle is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So the, my example of screwing up the Oscar keynote <laughs> is one of those where I saw that as an opportunity. So I went and I learned and I watched presentations of people doing 10 minutes, I got better. Right. So what you do is you look at all of these different missteps, whether it's, I didn't handle that conversation well, or I screwed up this pull request. Right. And when you feel that level of embarrassment or shame, or you, you, know, you weren't happy with your results, you're like, this is a learning lesson. And mm -hmm. when that puts you back in that power position, and you can control your own future. Right. That is, in my mind, mm. how you go from being someone where the world is controlling you to how you're in control of your own destiny. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, so I I can't disagree with any of that and try to follow that philosophy, but it, it does. Two questions come to mind. Yeah. Uh, one we don't have to answer now. We should do. Is though. we can try. Which is, <laughs> is Stoicism fundamentally any different from Buddhism? I don't and know. I don't, I don't know. Buddhism. Probably um, not. Uh, I, they sound very similar to me. I'm right. not an expert in Buddhism at all. Yeah. Or Stoicism, for that matter. Neither the not. second one is that this is a philosophy for young people in the sense that the Stoicism you're describing is about it's a, viewing each obstacle and difficulty you've faced and mistake you've made as an investment in future transactions success. or interactions yeah. or eventually future success. Yeah. And yeah. as one ages and approaches death, the value of that investment versus the cost of the mistake, that ratio changes, right? And I don't know how, like, that's if great. I'm 90, do I really feel that Stoicism is a viable philosophy to have? But that's a that's a really good point. Yeah. The one thing that strikes well, me, and I'm, I, I, think I, I think I agree with you, the one thing I would say is that one of the things I've read when it comes, and I'm not by any means a scholar when it comes to mm -hmm. Stoicism, is that, is that one of the values of this with people who are getting older is that sense of, of contentment in later life. Right, you probably it, get better at it. Is that you, so that's, it, yeah, that's something. Is right? that you yeah. get better at it so yeah. it becomes less of a conscious thing and you just start experiencing it more. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not an expert at this, but one of the things that I love about this is that as a philosophy is when something really bad goes wrong, right? When you, when you, if you're like, we both, you know, run our own companies, when you screw, when you screw something up with a client or whatever it might be. Cannot even keep track anymore. Right? <laughs> I have lost count long ago. Right. <laughs> Is that you look at those things and it, and it reinforces you for the future. But I, to, to your point, like... If you have a future. Right. Right. <laughs> right. If yeah. your future's like, you know, right. 20 minutes. <laughs> but, on, but on the other hand, if, you know, may, maybe on the other hand, like, Okay, but if you have less future, then whatever the cost was is also lower. Right. So maybe it works out. Maybe the math works out. And the one thing I can say from my very limited experiences since I've been like paying attention to this is, um, 
is that the more you do it, it's like, I suspect it's like meditation. I've done a bit of that. Is that it, it gets easy the more you do it. Right? Like I'll, there's moments when, for me, when you know something is not going the way I want it to go and I'll think, let's be stoic about this. And it kind of resets your brain. It almost like people who do right. lift weights, they right. reset the right. before you they You can get there down. faster because you've done it before. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, I and, think, and, and because you pay more attention to the, to the details, right? So, right. You, know, you, you, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you can start realizing when you're letting the environment right. to control you instead of you controlling the environment, yeah. and then you, you right. can take action faster. And yeah. the other the other things that well, a lot of times you, you don't have to think about it, right? Because now you, you internalize that, and then you immediately take action. Yeah. So yeah, that's good advice. I, I have Mike, no argument. You need to do it. <laughs> All right. I your also, turn. I also want to see your talk, by the way. Uh, you know, yeah, what, what, what? I'll go. <laughs> Bit of an ask. No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> oh, you know, I'll try to get it. Gonna... <laughs> that was, it was putting you on the spot. Really <laughs> yeah, go on. We're a hub city. No, it's not, it's not me. You no, know, I know. I, what can I say? You no, know, with those two tips, that's, that's amazing. That, that's the tip for today, guys. Right? All right. You know how you further your career? You tour the world, meeting cool sure. people, <laughs> hanging out with this, cool Java this people. This is so true. Yes. This is so true. That is I just I just want to say for the record that uh, all of my tip, I can't speak for you guys, but all of my tip is if you want to release it under Creative Commons Attribution or Attribution Share Like, it's fine with me. Likewise. Okay. Wonderful. Yes. All right, guys. So that's a tip for today. It was supposed to be five minutes, but, you know, those two uh, stars minutes, here, minutes, these 20, 20 minutes, that's, that's great. All right. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. Thank you. <laughs>